I honestly think this was the biggest mistake in any of the Stargate episodes. It just didn't make sense. It was not logical to me. And it did take another episode to fix. Welcome to Sidetrack, your sci-fi TV and movie channel. Stargate is not like Star Trek. Or at very least, it's not like new Star Trek. Stargate SG-1, SG Atlantis and SGU was always pretty good at keeping the canon straight. They didn't really make many mistakes. I was talking to somebody about this and they're sort of thinking, the only thing I could think of was that once they fired a Zat without the thing popping up. And I'm like, if that's really the biggest production error they ever made, they're doing pretty good. But you could argue that there's a few storyline errors. One of mine for me is actually that the replicators reappeared in Stargate Atlantis. That never really made much sense. I don't really know why they did it that way, other than they needed a reason to bring the replicators into that series because they wanted a cool villain. But the way they did it, that it was created by the Atlanteans, but in our galaxy it was just created as a toy. Mm, I didn't really like that. But it wasn't really an error. It was just how they did it. But what is the mistake I'm talking about? Well, to be honest, it's to do with Teal'c and his family. In the episode Bloodlines, Teal'c realises that his son, Ryak, is about to have the implantation. He's going to get the gold lava stuck in his gut and he wants to prevent it. He goes rushing back to Chulak. He finds their home burned out and he starts to panic that perhaps his family have been murdered. Well, after all, he is the Shova. He did turn on his god. Of course, the god would be vengeful against his family. That's obvious. This is really the biggest problem I have with the early episodes of Stargate. That in this episode, Teal hasn't mentioned his family. And then all of a sudden decides he has to risk his life to go and prevent the gold being implanted into his belly as he goes through that right of becoming a Jaffa. At no point does he go, you know what? Apophis might murder them. He really might. Because he's a vengeful god. He's not a very loving god. And of course he would. Now, Braytak appears and this is the first time we get to see him, Hammond of Texas. I just love that. Uh, as a joke, they carried on throughout the series, but it started in this episode. So Braytek tells him, no, he's not dead. Don't worry. They're over there hiding in a quarry. And Teal arrives just in time to prevent the implantation. Now, the SG-1 team has gone with them because they want to get a gold larvae to experiment on. Now, that's going to be interesting later. But if you've watched the episode, you know what I mean. Anyway, let's get back to the mistake. Teal'c arrives. SG-1 blows up a bunch of stuff, which would have 100% been seen by all the guards and things. Braytac then beats up a couple of guards at the end of the episode, which again, obviously we go straight back to Apophis exactly what's happened. Braytac says, I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. And he ends up legging it, basically. But Rayak and Teal'c's wife... I'm going to say this wrong, but it's, it looks like Dreak to me. Dreak. I only watched the episode like a week ago. I really should have paid attention to her name pronunciation, but I didn't. So he leaves them on Chulak. He left them. Now, if Apophis didn't kill them the first time round, and his wife does talk about how she's had to work really hard to sort of get back into within the Jaffa people and maybe try and get a little bit of a place again so that... I mean, so that Drea could even have the implantation. But Apophis would know that Teal could have been back on Chulak. He'd know it. Loads of people saw SG-1. He'd know that too. There is absolutely no way Apophis would leave these two alive. Now, I know what you're going to say. Instead of killing them, Apophis had a plan. He brainwashed Ryak and tried to turn him against Teal. In the episode Family... Teal has to go back to Chulak and basically get his wife and son and he takes them um, to another planet where they can live safely from the gold world. I don't know why he didn't do that the first time. I don't know why in the very first episode, Children of Gods, he didn't go, you know what, give me two minutes, I need to go and grab my wife and kid because 
when I do this, O'Neill, and I go with you, Apophis is definitely going to kill them. But he didn't do that. I don't know why then, in the episode in series one, Bloodlines, he didn't take them back to the SGC where they would be safe. So I asked Brad Wright what he thought of this little problem. And I'm going to tell you what he said. I hear you, but where would they stay? At the SGC? Yeah. Underground and in secret? Yeah, maybe. Each carrying a larvae gold. Now, at the point of um, the first episode, Ryak didn't have a gold larvae. So he could, in theory, have been brought up like a human being, I think. Uh, maybe. Um, they could never live in a community. What kind of life would that be? Now, I actually think Brad's got a point there. Could they have gone back to the SGC and lived something like a normal life? Well, eventually, Teal'c was allowed to live off base, so he could have lived off base with his family. But even when Teal'c did start to live off base, I know that didn't last very long, but even when he did, at no point did he mention, can I get my wife and kid? Never mentioned. Now, we don't know how often he visited his wife and kid on the planet he sent them to. But as far as we know, he didn't stay very long when he did. I'm not sure Teal'c liked his wife very much. It's just a suspicion. But Ryak, if they'd have taken him in the episode of Bloodlines, didn't have the larvae, like I said. So he could have been brought up normally on Earth where he'd have been safe. But I would argue there was no way Apophis was not going to get some revenge, at least, on his wife and child, or at very least use them against Teal'c. To be honest, it makes no sense that he didn't capture them immediately and get a message to the SGC that Teal'c, you return now, or I'm going to murder them. I will murder your wife in front of your son, and then I will murder your son. And I will make sure everybody on Tulak sees it. That is what he would have done. The only option for Teal'c was to get his wife and son and take them to the SGC and then maybe find them somewhere else so they could live eventually. Initially, though, take them to the SGC. Now, you could argue that Teal'c didn't know what he was walking into. So he could have got to the SGC and he's basically could have been handing himself over for experimentation, which actually was talked about in the couple of episodes after Teal'c arrived at the um, Stargate Command. So maybe he didn't because he was worried about their safety. So in that case, why didn't he get a message to Braytac immediately and say, please get my wife and kid and get them the hell out of Chulak as quickly as possible? I'm trying to figure out the situation of where I am now with the Tauri and as soon as I can, I'm going to get word to you. But for the love of God, well, not for the love of God, because that would be Apophis. For the love of the non-gods, get my wife and son out of there. That is the only thing that makes sense. As I said, they fixed this mistake in the later episode in season two. And he did get his wife and child out of there over a year after he first became the Shova. But they did fix the problem. It just, to me, makes no sense that they ever made the mistake in the first place. I don't really know why they ever gave Teal'c a family if they weren't going to follow through with it, because we never really see them. We see Ryak a couple of times, but we don't really see the wife in those two episodes, and we never really hear from her again. I think it painted themselves into a lot of sort of logical storyline corners, and to be honest, it caused a load of problems for Teal'c that they didn't need. You could argue that him turning on Apophis and joining up with O'Neill was already a little bit of a stretch. And I can't help but think it's not just a big error. It's really the biggest error in SG-1. But guys, I'd love to know what you think. So get across into the comments. Are there other mistakes in SG-1 that you can think of? Other than, you know, the Zat gun not popping up once or twice. I shouldn't really do that with the Zat gun because, you know, it already looks a little bit like a sex toy. I shouldn't really keep popping it up but anyway are there any other plot holes or logical leaps in stargate that you can think of please get into the comments and tell me 
Also, if you are new to the channel, please like, subscribe, hit that bell notification. Also, you can check the videos have been ticking along as we've been chatting. They're all linked in the description for our Facebook page, our Twitter page or X page, whatever the hell it's called nowadays, and our Patreon page, which actually most of our videos do premiere first. So if you want to see the videos before everybody else, including those Stargate rumors, go and check it out. Also, there's the Sidetrack webpage, sidetrack.co.uk, where we do articles based on a lot of our videos, and we try to add a little bit more information for you to digest. Go check that out too. As always, please stay safe, and I'll see you next time.